Neil Armstrong actually could fly a plane and was licensed to fly a plane before the state of Ohio legally authorized him to drive a car on his 16th birthday, I believe it was, when he got his uh, pilot's license. And, of course, uh, the most important flight of his career will take place this Sunday when he lands that lunar module on the moon and becomes the first man to walk on the moon. All the astronauts are experienced men, experienced at their line of work, you might say. None more so, really, than Neil Armstrong. He can fly just about anything that has wings. And his flight record is a long jumble of numbers and letters like the X-15, the F-104, the B-47, the paraglider, the F-5D, and many others. When he was a boy in Wapakoneta, Ohio, he and a friend repaired a wrecked plane, and Neil actually learned to fly it. You can see they're very proud of him there. During those late 30s and early 40s, he developed a love of flying that he has never lost. Armstrong left the small plane class in 1949, however, when after a couple of years at school at Purdue, he became a pilot in the United States Navy. He flew 78 combat missions during the Korean War. And after the war, Armstrong went back to school to receive his degree from Purdue. And in 1955, he became a test pilot for NASA's high-speed flight station at Edwards Air Force Base in California. And there he continued to add to his flight record that now shows he's had more than 4,000 hours flying time. In September of 1962, Neil Armstrong became an astronaut. He served as backup command pilot for Gemini 5 and then command pilot for the Gemini 8 mission. He was the first man to successfully dock two vehicles in space, but more importantly, he showed his coolness under fire. A malfunction caused the dock vehicles to pitch about wildly. Armstrong separated the Agena from the Gemini spacecraft, but the spinning uh, continued for some for him and for Dave Scott. Just seconds away from disaster, Armstrong found the cause of the spinning and stabilized the Gemini spacecraft. It was not the first nor the last demonstration by Neil Armstrong of his magnificent control of himself and whatever flying machine he happens to be piloting. And now he is in command of man's most historic flight to date. He is ready.